Hi dear friends welcome to my channel let us discuss the fourth part of previous year question for the post of Sandy Goys biology form 6 science laboratory the previous discussion parts were provided in the description box okay look at this question the question is cell vagus syndrome is due to option a inefficient paroxysmal beta oxidation option b inefficient mitochondrial beta oxidation option c inefficient glyoxysomal beta oxidation and the last option is inefficient omega oxidation if you are analyzing the options of the question provided uh, you can see a term beta oxidation okay here beta oxidation means beta oxidation of fatty acid before going to beta oxidation uh, we can check what is fatty acid you know that fatty acids are the building blocks of fats or lipid they are organic acids having carboxyl group at its one end okay and the carbon atom which is present near to the carboxyl group is known as alpha carbon and the carbon at atom which is present just uh, just adjacent to the alpha carbon atom is known as uh, a beta carbon atom and the last carbon atom is known as the omega carbon okay omega carbon is uh, usually represented by methyl group in a very fatty acid so beta oxidation of fatty acid is a breakdown of fatty acid into two carbon molecule namely acetyl coenzyme a suppose if we are going to uh, break down a 6e 16 carbon containing fatty acid namely palmitic acid then what will be the product we obtained the product will be 2 carbon fat 2 carbon acetyl coa and remaining 14 carbon fatty acyl coa okay beta oxidation of fatty acid mainly occur in mitochondrial matrix but in, in addition to mitochondrial matrix it can also takes play it can also take place in the peroxisome and glyoxysome as well what are glyoxysomes glyoxysomes are specialized uh, peroxisome they are found in uh, plants having fatty or oily seeds okay for the proper seed germination this fat or oil has to be converted into sugar or carbohydrate isn't it okay and that process takes place by means of a beta oxidation fatty acid as well as by another cycle known as gliosylate cycle okay and the key enzymes involved in gliosylate cycle is isocitrate lyase and malate synthase i think uh, this uh, the question about this key enzyme as in the previous year's csr net exam so these uh, two uh, enzymes are very very important okay Glyoxysomes are found in uh, contact with the lipid bodies in cartilage or endosperm where fatty acids be are being converted into carbohydrate during germination. Remember, uh, this glyosylate cycle um, can be seen in um, those seeds storing fat or oil. Okay, what is the role of this glyosylate cycle? To mobilize this oil or fat into soluble sugar which will help for the proper germination of the seed okay then what is uh, selvergers syndrome selvergers syndrome is a peroxisome biogenesis disorder the patient having this syndrome is provided with a very low amount of uh, peroxisome okay as a result the beta oxidation of uh, fatty acid will not properly take place in those uh, patients okay when we are analyzing their cell we can say you see long chain fatty acid remaining as such why because the beta oxidation of fatty acid uh, uh, is taking place in very low rate okay so the cell berg syndrome is associated with the inefficiency of beta oxidation of fatty acid in peroxisome once again i am inviting your attention to this question okay so uh, the cell vergus syndrome is due to now you know that it is due to the inefficient paroxysmal beta oxidation so the correct answer for this question is the option a okay 
ഓക്കെ നെക്സ്റ്റ് ക്വസ്റ്റൻ ഈസ് നെയിം ഓഫ് എ സ്പീഷീസ് ഓർ സബ് സ്പീഷീസ് ഇൻ വിച്ച് സെക്കൻഡ് ഓർ തേർഡ് കമ്പോണ്ട് ഓഫ് ദി നെയിം റിപ്പീറ്റ് ദ ജനറിക് നെയിം ഈസ് കാൾഡ് ഓപ്ഷൻ എ ക്രിസോനിയം ബി സിനോനിയം സി ഹോമോനിയം ആൻഡ് ദ ലാസ്റ്റ് ഓപ്ഷൻ ഈസ് ടോട്ടോ നെയിം ദ ഫസ്റ്റ് ഓപ്ഷൻ ഈസ് ക്രീസോനിയം വാട്ട് മീൻ ബൈ ക്രീസോനിയം ക്രീസോനിയം ഈസ് എ സൈറ്റഡ് യൂസ് ഓഫ് എ ടാക്സോൺ നെയിം യൂഷ്വലി സ്പീഷീസ് നെയിം വിത്ത് ഇൻ എ പബ്ലിക്കേഷൻ ഇൻ ബൊട്ടാണിക്കൽ ആൻഡ് സോളജിക്കൽ നോമോക്ലേച്ചർ സിനോണിംസ് ആർ ദി ഡിഫറെൻറ്റ് സയൻറ്റിഫിക് നെയിംസ് ഓഫ് എ സെയിം ടാക്സോൺ ഫോർ എക്സാമ്പിൾ ടു നെയിംസ് ഫോർ ദി സെയിം സ്പീഷീസ് ബട്ട് എ ഹോമോനിയം ഈസ് എ നെയിം ഫോർ എ ടാക്സോൺ ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ഐഡൻറ്റിക്കൽ ഇൻ സ്പെല്ലിംഗ് ടു അനദർ സച്ച് എ നെയിം ബട്ട് ദാറ്റ് ബിലോങ്സ് ടു ഡിഫറെൻറ്റ് ടാക്സോൺ so remember synonymy synonym is the uh, different name of a same taxon whereas this homonym is identical in spelling but belongs to different taxon okay what do you mean by tautonym tautonym is a binomial in which both genus and species names are identical that is genus and specific epithets are identical okay for example helianthus helianthus then sisyphus sisyphus okay but these tauto names are not permitted by international court for nomenclature hence it is said to be illegitimate okay so the correct answer for this question is option d tauto name where both the genus and species name are identical Okay, the next question is, the metrilineal most recent common ancestor is known as Option A, Y chromosomal E Option B, historic E Option C, X chromosomal E And Option D, mitochondrial E In the field of human genetics, the name mitochondrial E refers to the metrilineal most recent common ancestor of all currently living anatomically modern humans. who is estimated to have lived approximately 100,000 to 200,000 years ago this is the most recent woman from whom all living humans today descend okay and this uh, mitochondrial uh, eve that is the metrilineal most recent common ancestor is abbreviately known as mrca so the correct answer for this question is option d mitochondrial eve Next question is, myoglobin is a protein existing in dash structure. The options are A, quaternary, B, tertiary, C, secondary, and D, primary. Okay, water proteins, proteins are the polymers of amino acids. Okay, the amino acids join to, to form what? Protein. Okay, you know that all proteins are heteropolymer. That is, all proteins are made up of different type of amino acid you can't see a protein with the same amino acid okay and in protein you can see the four level of structural organization they are known as primary structure secondary structure tertiary structure and quaternary structure in primary structure the proteins are arranged in the form of a linear structure where amino acids are arranged held together by peptide bond just like beads on string isn't it okay and this peptide bond is having the partial double bond character even though it appears as a single bond but it is having partial double bond character due to resonance effect okay and from the primary structure the orientation of amino acid arrangement and the position information of amino acid can be interfered that is which is the first amino acid which is second amino acid and which is the last amino acid like that okay and what is about secondary structure when these uh, proteins in the primary structure undergo folding undergo folding or coiling or twisting it will give rise to another structure known as secondary structure you know that secondary structure is of two types Uh, alpha helical structure and beta pleated sheet structure okay then the tertiary structure what is tertiary structure when these uh, proteins in the secondary structure arranged in the form of a oolan ball oolan ball okay it will get a three dimensional structure 
it is known as terrestrial structure terrestrial structure is also known as three dimensional structure okay you know to uh, you know to get certain activity the protein should be in tertiary structure okay then what is quaternary structure in quaternary structure more than one polypeptide chains are involved okay whereas in primary secondary and tertiary structure only one polypeptide chain is involved okay and uh, these polypeptide chain together form a plate like structure or a rectangular shaped structure or a spherical shaped structure like that okay such a type of structure is said to be quaternary structure a typical example for protein um, occupy in quaternary structure is our uh, hemoglobin okay now let us uh, look at the difference between the hemoglobin and myoglobin okay hemoglobin is a red protein which is responsible for transporting oxygen in the blood of vertebrates whereas myoglobin is a red protein with a heme which carries and stores oxygen in the muscle the molecular weight of uh, hemoglobin is 64 kilo dalton uh, for that of uh, myoglobin is 16.7 kilo dalton and uh, hemoglobin is composed of four polypeptide chain whereas the myoglobin is composed of single polypeptide chain okay remember that and uh, in the case of hemoglobin it is a tetramer composed of two alpha and two beta units whereas in myoglobin it is a monomer and it lacks quaternary structure but the quaternary structure is present in hemoglobin okay and uh, my uh, hemoglobin binds with the four oxygen molecule at a time whereas the myoglobin binds with a single oxygen molecule hence myoglobin is a monomer and is made up of a single polypeptide chain and uh, its highest level of protein structure is tertiary so the structural organization of uh, the protein myoglobin is tertiary structure so the answer for this question is option d primary remember myoglobin is a protein made up of a single polypeptide chain and is having tertiary structure okay next question is the sharing of ancestral characters by several species is called option a synapomorphy b sim plesomorphy c ontogeny and the last option is phylogeny okay let us discuss some important difference between synapomorphy and symplesomorphy okay synapomorphy means a characteristic present in an ancestral species and shared exclusively by its evolutionary descendants that is in a more or less modified form whereas symplesomorphy means what an ancestral character shared by two or more taxa that's most important difference in synapomorphy it describes derived character whereas symplesomorphy describes an ancestral character in synapomorphy the character is shared by the most recent common ancestor but in uh, symplesomorphy the character is shared by the earliest common ancestor example for synapomorphy is the presence of the same number of vertebrae in the necks of the mammals and giraffes and the example for uh, symplesomorphy is the presence of a vertebral column in the mammals and other vertebrates let us look at the major differences between ontogeny and phylogeny okay in ontogeny it deals with the development or developmental history of an individual organism whereas in phylogeny it deals with the study of relationship among different groups of organism and their evolutionary development ontogeny gives the development history of an organism within its own lifetime whereas phylogeny gives the evolutionary history of a species okay ontogeny describes how a chicken came to life starting from a single cell whereas uh, phylogeny describes the evolutionary process of gallus gallus a particular species okay and that particular uh, species may include a lot of individuals isn't it hence ontogeny the focus of study is an individual organism whereas in phylogeny okay the relationship between different individual considered at a time okay now you people know the answer for this question that is option b symplesomorphy okay this uh, synapomorphy and symplesomorphy is an important topic 
uh, when your CSI net exam is concerned. Okay, the answer for this question is option B, simplisomorphic. Thanks for watching. The remaining questions will be uploaded as early as possible. And I will try to explain all these questions as simple as I can. If you people feel this video useful, please like, share, subscribe and comment. Thank you so much. Keep in touch and stay safe.